Welcome to the High Pressure Podcast with me, George Rotterman. And me, Marie Williams. Brought to you by Reliably Rotterman. Bringing you industry news and trends. Plus, insightful conversations with industry leaders. Let's get to today's show. Okay, um, we are back with a solution session on the High Pressure Podcast, which are our short episodes where we answer a customer question uh, with a Ratterman expert. Today, we have Patrick Kirk, who is our all-around expert in hoses and um, also just, I feel like, our house movie star so and rock star. So welcome, Patrick. Thank you, Marie. Thanks for uh, coming on and helping us answer some questions about vacuum jacketed hoses. No problem. Um, Yeah. So I'm going to jump right into the customer question. It says, uh, hi, Jennifer. I'm looking into vacuum jacketed hoses for a cryogenic application and wanted to get your input on the benefits and when they might be the best option. Also, I'd appreciate any information on how the cost compares to other hoses. Thanks for your help. Good. Well, yeah. thank you very much, first of all, for having me. And uh, let, let's let start off by just saying, what is a vacuum jacketed hose? Um, I use this hose from time to time. This is a liquid transfill hose. And this is a very common hose in fill plants used for transfilling liquid cryogenic product. Um, This part of the hose right here is corrugated stainless steel. They put the braid around the outside of that to give you pressure carrying capacity. So for an uh, example, two layers of stainless steel on top of here will give you 3,800 PSI pressure. If you put six layers, I can get this hose up to 4,800 or 6,000 PSI, but we are talking about liquid cryogenics, and they live in a world that does not need high pressure. They're in a world where we want to move the liquid. We want to make sure that we've got the right ID product. Uh, Rotterman sells a 3 8 and a one half inch ID vacuum jacketed hose. Now, this is a liquid transfill hose with the corrugated center grating on the outside of that for the pressure carrying capacity, and then armor. I recommend getting armor on every hose you buy, whether it's vacuum jacketed or a standard liquid transfill hose. What's different about this hose from a vacuum jacketed would be the hose right here that you see the corrugated stainless steel, it's corrugated so you could bend it without it cracking. And on a vacuum jacketed hose, we would take another layer and go over the top and then weld it on and pull a vacuum on the annular space between the two walls. So a vacuum jacketed hose would have two walls right here. It wouldn't have the braiding on it because you don't need it. The the hose is rated at 150 PSI. It's meant to carry liquid, cryogenic product. The braiding, again, I say get it on every hose because it does one thing better than anything else, and that is you cannot bend the hose beyond its bend radius. That's how most hoses in a fill plant get ruined because they either fall and they get bent and you get a crimp. Something like this, this hose here has a crimp on it right here and it's Mm -hmm. damaged from this point forward. This will be the first place it blows when it does blow. So this is a standard hose 3,000 PSI for carrying gas. A liquid transfer hose is meant to transfer liquid from, let's say, a doer or a liquid container into a doer. Um, and then a vacuum jacketed hose would lay, would have that extra layer running over the top 
And that layer would have a vacuum hold on the annular space. And that vacuum creates a thermal barrier from the exterior. So when would I want to use the uh, vacuum jacketed hose? Like what are a few examples of of good application? Um, I would say the number one application for a vacuum jacketed hose is anywhere that you're, um, anywhere that you need large quantities of, of cryogenic product. For example, a cold box. Um, I'm thinking of uh, a company such as uh, Aerospace Boeing has a lot of these cold boxes in their engineering facility. And what they do in these cold boxes is they, they, they'll make them extremely cold for a certain period of time, and then they'll heat them up for a certain period of time. And they'll repeat that cycle over and over. And that simulates how the hose would be used on, say, a jet or a rocket. Oh. And the doing the temperature difference simulates what it could be exposed to on a daily basis. So mm-hmm. if the part has a weak component, it will typically come up during these testing that they're doing. They call it alt pause, high altitude life testing. And that's how the aerospace industry uses liquid cryogenics. Got it. So... I was at a customer facility um, and the drivers were coming back. So I was seeing that the hoses that the drivers use um, and they were all beat up and kinked up and they were like, yeah, we really probably need to buy vacuum jacketed hoses, but they seem to be, you know, heavier when they ice up. What are your thoughts on drivers using vacuum jacketed hoses versus not? I would not recommend that only okay. only because um, they are expensive. Mm-hmm. They're much more expensive. You had asked me earlier what what price difference is. A hose like this, which is meant to transfill liquid mm-hmm. from a liquid container into a doer, this hose cost about two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, the same hose, same length, six foot long. Will be will cost a little under a thousand dollars, so there's uh-huh. a big difference in price. Um, the guys on the trucks that are out in the field, um, they they could use a vacuum jacketed hose, but I would say it's a little bit of overkill for that the application they're using it in. So in what specific industries or applications would you say a vacuum jacketed hose is essential? Probably the most uh, popular would be the aerospace industry. Uh, The biotech industry uses vacuum jacketed hoses, semiconductor, food and beverage, pharmaceutical, and the medical equipment and industrial equipment use liquid cryogenics. What kind of applications? Like I said before, cold box applications for testing of components, shrink fitting of components. Um, there's a uh, like many different applications that you can use cryogenics to achieve the goal that you're looking for. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, when would you recommend using a vacuum jacket hose? over other types of hoses, particularly for cryogenics or extreme temperature environments? Anywhere that you're using a a large amount of cryogenic product, the name of the game is uh, when you're losing, when you have a heat loss and a heat loss is caused by, let's just say, a liquid transfill hose can transfer cryogenic product, but it doesn't do it very efficiently. Why? Because there's a huge, huge heat loss that takes place as the hose is moving through the hose. A vacuum jacketed hose creates a thermal barrier that holds the cryogenic product over a longer length of time. And as a result, there's less flash loss or loss of product. 
Incredible. So that's what makes it worth the investment. Although it's a lot more expensive than a traditional hose. Yeah. You're not losing product. Yes, exactly. That's if I were looking at it from an engineering standpoint, or let's say the owner's standpoint, I would say uh, the small difference in price for the hose is well worth it because you're going to reduce any loss cryogenic product that you would have by using the wrong hose. Excellent. And uh, how, what kind of maintenance is uh, required to maximize the lifespan and performance of a vacuum jacketed hose? Okay. This uh, uh, is something I tell everybody maintenance wise. Um, all, I would say very little Murray. Uh, maintenance on a, a vacuum jacketed hose, again, if you install it in a spot where it's not going to move, and it's what I tell people all the time is avoid severe bends. A bend like this is not good for hoses because as the gas travels through here, it'll wear the inside of the hose. It'll take away 25% of your pressure carrying capacity. So it's limiting the hose. So keep all your hose, make your flow as smooth as possible. Avoid quick turns like this. As far as maintaining it otherwise, there's really nothing that you need to do to it other than make sure you get armor on the outside. And that will prevent anyone from being able to bend it beyond mm -hmm. its bend radius. With armor, um, Basically, you won't have to do any maintenance to it other than keeping it clean, keeping it uh, stored away in a very clean spot. And then when you bring it out and hook it up the next time you need it, it'll work like brand new. Well, I can't thank you enough, Patrick, for all your uh, hose wisdom. And if you are a customer of Radman Manufacturing and have questions about hoses, um, please give us a call. Patrick is available to you. Um, additionally, we can pretty much get you any type of hose and length that you need for your application. So uh, please reach out to us. And I also want to mention a really great tool that we have um, that I've, I haven't seen anything like it. I don't know how you feel, Patrick, but our hose builder on our website, rmiorder.com, go to our hose builder and you can build out your hoses and it will only let you um, select the correct fittings and hoses based on the application that you're trying to use. So you'll build a safe hose for your application and the correct hose for your application. And it's very seamless to use that tool. Yes, you know, Marie, I've never told you this, but I've used the hose builder several times. I think it's an awesome program. And so right? I, I would highly recommend anyone out there, if you want to research hoses, um, feel free to call me or go on the hose builder. You can build your own hose for whatever the application is, and you'll find that it gives you a drawing of what it looks like along with the part number so you can order that hose and get exactly what you want. Well said. All right. Well, thank you, Patrick, and um, I look forward to talking to you next time. All right. Thank you, Marie. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay up to date with the latest news in the gas and welding industry by clicking on the subscribe button. And check out one of our other videos to learn more. Find out more about Reliably Ratterman at rmiorder.com.